Hello everybody and welcome to another Transformers third party review. Today, thanks to the guys over at Robot Kingdom, I'm taking a look at the Old Soldiers OS01 and OS03 Iron Will and Medic by TFC. This is their interpretation of Ironhide and Ratchet from what, in my opinion, is a Studio Ox inspired masterpiece line. The boxes are quite minimalistic. They kind of like this grilled, kind of vibrant grey there with silhouettes on the sides there. The back here, we've got Medic in his robot form and we've got him in his vehicle mode. At the bottom here, it says ages 16 plus. You've got the TFC logo here and where to find them. On the other side, we've got that same silhouette and on the bottom, you've got the advert for the opposite figure. And warning, don't eat your toys, you will choke. Let's crack them open. And here they are out of the packaging. They look fantastic. Really, really good. We get three or four reminders that uh, we have to be very, very careful of the wing mirrors. These here are held on by very, very small pieces and I can see them causing a problem. If they get caught, they will snap. So rule of thumb, be careful, don't get them caught. Uh, these are very, very strong, robust figures. They come packaged in styrofoam, very similar to the likes of the Toy World figures. Really, really secure packaging. And as you can see, they do have slightly different looks about them, and they do come with slightly different accessories. Ironhide, or Soldier, comes with this large rifle, very similar to the likes of the Eye Gear figure. And it also comes with these very G1-esque inspired accessories, which can attach to the arms. Uh, the guns are very minimalistic, but again, good build quality and uh, a very G1-esque look about them. Now, Ratchet, aka Medic, again comes with very, very G1-esque weapons. Really, really solid. Just very basic look to them. But effective nonetheless. Now, the thing that really caught my attention on these figures is that amazing head sculpt that both of them support. I personally think it's probably one of the best Ironhide and Ratchet sculpts out there. Now I probably will get the official Takara, Masterpiece Ironhide and Masterpiece Ratchet, because I'm going to start separating my Masterpiece figures into the Studio Ox, where I'm going to have the likes of uh, Carrie, and then I'm going to have these two by his side. I just think they look phenomenal absolutely amazing sculpts really really great expression captured on Ironhide's face got that nice little boxy chin there and Ratchet he just it, it's just a good clean sculpt and one thing I really dislike about these figures are the hands uh, they're neither here nor there both hands are actually different this hand has a pin with fixed finger joints and a fixed thumb. And this hand has a kind of a grasping motion and then it's on a ball joint. You, I don't see the need for that. You either keep them completely fixed, which is fine, because I mean we expect that sort of thing from the Takara Masterpiece figures, so I'd have been happy with that. And then they've given us kind of a half half-hearted grasping finger I think um, it's nice to get some motion in there but if you're gonna give motion give us something like what we get with the KFC figures or some of the X transbot hands uh, for like say Scourge for example he had really nice articulated hands or the DX9 Tyrant these fingers are just a little bit lackluster um, unfortunately that does take it away slightly from the overall effect because you can visibly see from the outside of the hand that they're different. Now, of course, the hands are not the be all and end all of a the figure. These are, of course, 
interchangeable. They are on a mushroom peg. So if we got a third party or a fourth party hand, we could just swap that out easily by sliding that off. Whilst we're here, let's flip his fist over, revealing a nubbin on the outside. This will now allow us to add on Ironhide's accessories. It's a tight push, but we can just wiggle that accessory on to the arm. As for the accessories, again, unfortunately, they are let down somewhat by the hands. Ironhide's gun has a tab inside which plugs wonderfully into his palm of his articulated hand. And of course, this just plugs into the nubbin on the end of his hand. Now, unfortunately, the same can't be said for Ratchet. His articulated hand will not hold his pistol. His pistol has a very short nub with no tab section on the base and you just can't put it on there, it will not stay and it won't plug overly well into the static hand. I mean it goes in, it just doesn't look extremely natural. Now the underarm kind of accessory, kind of a laser thing that comes out, it looks a little bit like Rio Blast there with that flicking out from the underside of his arm, but that works, I can see that coming out from his arm there and him working on some Autobots. And both Ironhide and Ratchet do have a small computer console in their arm and also a radar dish on the opposite arm. I think this could be a really nice touch, something that Repro Labels could give us a small display screen for. Now let's cover the articulation on these hunky chunky monkeys. The head is on a ball, can look up that much, down that much, looking very quizzical. Left and right, and yes you saw it here, we have light piping in the back of those eyes. Few will be happy. Uh, the arms move outwards on a lovely ratchet there. Fantastic range there, lots and lots and lots of clicks. Forward and back again on a nice ratchet with ample clearance of those dodgy little wing mirrors. You've got a forward and back motion, albeit very, very small. It's kind of a breast swimming motion there. We have an upper bicep swivel. We have a 90 degree bend at the elbow. We have a rotation at the wrist and of course we've already covered the articulation on those hands. You even get a really nice ab rocker which is a very very welcome addition to a masterpiece figure. The waist rotates quite freely with no hindrance. The legs have individual skirts on the front sides and back so lifting those up we get full range of motion forward on extremely tight ratchet, full range of motion back, really, really nice ratchets on the splits position there, upper thigh swivel, 90 degree bend. Coming down to the feet, the feet are somewhat odd, uh, they go up and down and this section here the heel spur is kind of like on a separate hinge which goes up and down we don't really get any great um, depth on the pivot there is some movement there because it's just a ball in there but it doesn't give us a real amount of depth the only real downside that i've found with the articulation on these is it suffers from the same situation that the voodoo versions of these figures do uh, that there, you really want a soft ratchet or just a friction joint on this because it's such a large jump. He either has together or right the way apart. It doesn't look as bad on these because you've got that upper thigh. Swivel. You can still get a really nice stance on him, but I just would have liked a friction joint in there so we didn't have to spread those legs quite so wide. Here he is with Carrie just to give you an idea of what I was going for, that Studio Ox look. And here they are all together with some of the G1 cast, just to give you an idea of how they scale. I think they look pretty good, don't they? That's a really good size. So the summary for bot mode, they scale extremely well. They still have very, very dynamic posing ability. 
even though I wasn't overly happy about the ratchets in the thighs and those fiddly little fingers. They look fantastic. They could definitely take a couple of shelf dives and survive. The wing mirrors do worry me somewhat, but bot mode is sublime. Let's get these guys changed up and see how they fare in their vehicle modes. Now the transformation for Ratchet and Ironhide is exactly the same for both figures. Now it's definitely complexing enough to be equal to that of the Masterpiece line, but at the same time it's very elegant and there's some really really nice hidden panels, lots of flipping, lots of turning, and the overall effect is fantastic. The first thing you want to do, you want to fold the hands in, make sure these sections are down on the arms, flip the section up and fold the fists in lift the arms up and you want to just line these panels up together and then just slide these two sections together like so and then bend this hinge on the top of the arm so it rocks up and over and just presses down like so. Straighten up the head, push it down into the chest cavity, come around to this back section, lift this section up, slide this section from the underside, come under here, pop this section, pop this section up, and just lift it up and have it placed on top for now. Untab the chest section. Now with the legs straight, you want to lift these side hinges up, and pop those down lift this section up here and with that open you can flip this wheel section around the clearance is very very minimal but the wheel will turn on the inside there flipping that round like so the upper knee section is just tabbed into the underside here if we just pull this section back that releases this kneecap the kneecap can then flip on this hinge here and rock back in and as you rock that back in there's a tab on the hip and that's going to locate on the inside there. We can now close this section back off. Come around to the other side. You want to rotate this section down like so. Flip this section here upwards. Flip this section out. And then we want to do a full 180 on the foot. Rotate the foot up, fold this section back down, fold this section up here, and then fold this tab down here, and that will tab into the back here, covering up the back section, and then we can lift up the rear fender. At this point, you can then just tab the bottom half of the kind of ambulance minivan thing together. You want to just bend these sections just out for a little while as well. Because what we need, we need free access to this section here. Rotate this section around. Use the rocker hinge. You want to move this section down. Bring that around like so. And then you want to push it back in there. But before we do that, rock this section back a bit more. And we want to gain access to these sections underneath here. Now they are a job to split. They're meant to just pull apart. But it's not overly easy to get in there and actually pull them apart. Let's just move this section down and out of the way. So we've got a free range there. See what I mean? It's not overly easy to kind of untab them from each other just a matter of playing one off against the other there we go we've got them see what i did they literally just pry them these sections just now swing out and form the side lamps to the front of the ambulance you can now flip these arm sections back up to the side and then now we're going to tab into those new lights we just added just slide those in and tab those together lifting this section up you want to now bring this section back up to this position and your next task is to 
peg this section here into either side. So slide that one back down to have that in. And again, on this side, bring one of these arm sections around, making sure this section is lifted up fully. You can bring these arm sections in and around, and that's going to slot in here like so. And that's just going to tab in at the front and at the back. This top ambulance strip also pegs in at two points along the top. Ratchet's medical weapon can be stored on the inside. And there we have them transformed up, all singing, all dancing. They look amazing. They actually look and feel in vehicle modes very much like the iGear versions did, only kind of upsized into a better scale. And I really, really like them. I love the use of the chrome. I love the kind of rubber tires. Not sure if it's a rubber or really, really, really soft plastic, but it rolls and glides exceptionally well. Uh, things tab together fantastically. Do you see what I mean about the complexity of the transformation? It's absolutely glorious. Underside there, we've got a little tiny bit of the bot showing, but all in all, everything kind of folds out on itself. Uh, the wing mirrors are kind of painted up to look reflective. They're not actually that reflective, um, but all in all, the vehicle modes are fantastic. I really, really like them, and it's a pleasure to transform them. Now, I'm not going to go out and measure the exact size of these minivans, but to the eye, I think the scale works exceptionally well with the Masterpiece line. Bearing in mind, they're very Studio Ox inspired for their bot modes. The actual vehicle modes themselves are very, very realistic and very reminiscent of uh, what we're actually getting from Takara. They look extremely, extremely similar. If you're after a masterpiece vehicle, then these could actually be the ones for you. They look fantastic. They're very robust and they fit in exceptionally well. So there we have it guys, this is the Iron Wheel and Medic from TFC. Thanks again to the guys over at Robot Kingdom for getting these out to me to take a look at. My honest opinions, uh, bot modes are fantastic, vehicle modes scrub up exceptionally well, transformation is pleasant, the complexity is high, and the overall effect is outstanding. They're not without their faults. I really, really do dislike the hands on these and the wing mirrors are super, super scary. They really, really are. I would have personally have preferred the same sort of things we get with the Masterpiece wing mirrors where we can plug them in. They are optional. I think in future, if they tend to do something like that, I think it would be a better option for them. But all in all, the overall Look, feel, and design is high-end, very competitive, and places TFC solidly in amongst the masterpiece bad boys. Thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.